Hello, hello, mic check. I hope I am audible and uh, there is no show in the voice. Good morning everyone, this is Dr. Mamta Sharma, Organizing Secretary for the IS, ICS DGC 2023. On the behalf of my patron and principal, I welcome you all on the second day of the, this international conference. Master Swati Gyan Aur Chetna Ka Pratinidhatva Karti Hai, Vah Vedu Ki Chayini Hai. Master Swati Ki Aradhana Karte Vah Hai, Is Conference Ki Dousri Din Ki Shuruat Karte Hai. Since we are already running a bit late, without taking much time, I would like to call upon Dr. Meera Shivastav, who is the first keynote speaker for the day. Dr. Shivastav is former principal, Government College Rutgarsan, and former Ajudi Zoology, Government Rugal College, Bikane, Rajasthan, India. Chairperson for today is Dr. Ajay Prakash Gupta, who is working as Director of SSI, New Delhi. Sir, you are also welcome. I am also welcome. You are also welcome. You are also welcome. और सेशन की शुरुआत करें। रिस्पेक्टेड चेयरमैन, रिस्पेक्टेड पेंशन एंड प्रिंसिपल प्रोफेसर मुकुल सिंह जी, द साइंटिस्ट्स, डेलीगेट्स, रिसर्चर्स, रिसर्च स्टूडेंट्स, फैकल्टी मेंबर्स my colleagues uh, from Bikanir, uh, Dr. Rajin Kroni, Dr. Nil Changani, which I can see here, and uh, Professor Shashi Sharma, is not here. So, a very good morning to all of you, and uh, straight away I will uh, start uh, my dedication, my talk. As the theme of the conference uh, was, and rather is, Sustainable Development Goals for Environmental Conservation. I have tried to stick to the theme of the conference and associate the topic uh, with little data and the kind of work we have done. So, sustainable development goals preserve pesticides. As we all know, the UN Sustainable Summit in September 2015 adopted 17 SDGs. And in association, if I talk, pesticides apply worldwide act as a major threat to at least a few of these SDGs. Of the 17, you all know 17 SDGs, 5, what I have tried to because otherwise uh, this talk would have uh, gone a, uh, a long way. Uh, 5 can be directly associated with the use of pesticides and these are the second SDG which stands for zero hunger, the third which says good health and well-being, that well Responsible consumption and production, the 14th life below water, and the 15th life on land. This is the definition given uh, by the FAO about the pesticide, which of course we all know is any substance or mixture of substances intended for preventing or destroying or controlling any pest. I am not going to read out the whole definition. Uh, this is uh, the cycle of the uh, pesticide which we can see in the environment that it goes on and goes on. Uh, the pesticides are sprayed in the crop fields uh, or the crops and then they run off into the water bodies and again vaporization and through precipitation back. So the cycle is that the pesticides always remain in the environment once they are uh, uh, used. So the second SDG is zero hunger in, in relation to pesticides. Definitely uh, if we talk about the food production, increase in food production is the topmost objective uh, for all, all the countries may, around the globe, maybe we or any other global country, as world population is expected to grow to nearly 10 billion by 2050. Based on evidence, world population is increasing by an estimated 97 million per year. So what has to be done? Definitely, crop production needs to be enhanced. The Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations has in fact issued a sovereign forecast that world food production needs to increase by 70%, minus 70% in order to keep pace with the demand of growing population. The increasing world population has therefore put a tremendous amount of pressure on the existing agriculture system so that food needs can be met with. So what has happened with this increasing crop production which is required, what are we doing? Herbicides, insecticides. 
pesticides, fungicides, humanicides, fertilizers, soil amendments are now being used in higher quantities than what were being used in the past. Actually, why are we using these pesticides? Just to give a uh, bring into your notice the target insect, which is a only relation to agriculture, fields, and storage. Uh, these are some insects. Uh, uh, the larval stage is being uh, more harmful to the crops, and of course, these are the stored grain pests. Uh, so we are actually using the pesticides to kill these insects. But what is happening? Uh, these are the non-target insects. What happens? We want to kill the insecticide insects which are pests, but unfortunately we are indirectly targeting the non-target insects which should not be killed, which are really beneficial for agriculture. Uh, just to talk about the pollinators, the decomposers, the soil enrichment insects, the biological control agents, there is a long list, but just to give you a glimpse that these are the insects which indirectly are harmed. We need the pollinators for agriculture and if we kill them, one can understand the scenario. 70% of the crop is pollinated by insects, so we need them so badly. So what has happened? The use of pesticides has resulted in numerous negative side effects causing environmental damage, affecting human health, reducing biodiversity and of course resulting in overall environmental pollution. Then the next SDG, good health and well-being. The deleterious effects of pesticides on human health have resulted due to the pesticide use toxicity and persistence in the environment and their ability to enter into the food chain. They can enter the human body by direct contact with chemicals through food, especially fruits and vegetables, contaminated water or polluted air. Both acute and chronic disease can result from pesticide exposure. So because we are talking about the health, it's very important. Uh, I would, you know, what has happened every year since 2002, the Consumer Health Watchdog and Environmental Working Group, it's an American activist uh, which specializes in research and advocacy in the areas of agriculture subsidies. Uh, this, it releases a, a shopper's guide to pesticides and its produce. The 12 most pesticide contaminated foods and vegetables of the year 2022. It releases every year. Uh, the latest is not available, but what I would like to show you. These are the vegetables and fruits uh, which have been found to be infected at least with one and sometimes with two to three pesticides. Uh, just a glimpse. The strawberries, the spinach, the kale and the collard, the nectarines, the apples, the grapes, well and hot peppers, cherries, peaches, pears, celery and tomatoes. So this, these are the 20 which have highly, you know, have been found to be highly infected with the pesticides but the list is still long. These are the topmost 20. Then impacts of pesticides on human health as I have talked about, they can affect acute, they can be in acute effects or chronic effects. Acute effects which happen immediately, which include like nausea, dizziness, diarrhea, asthmatic patients can be harmed much more. Chronic effects, chronic effects which manifest themselves many years after the exposure and they, these uh, include the cancer, the tumors, brain and the nervous system being damaged, birth defects, uh, infertility and other reproductive problems and so on and so forth. There is a long list and uh, the effects are carcinogenic effects as well and who are exposed to pesticides, they are at a greater risk to develop various cancers including uh, NHL, leukemia, lymphoma, brain tumors, etc. Neurobehavioral effects like dementia, reproductive deficits, increase in spontaneous abortion, decrease fertility, increase in stillbirths, decrease sperm count, so on and so forth. And oxidative stress produced by pesticides interfere with DNA and its repair mechanism leading to mutation. So see it is not only in this generation but the effect can go into their progeny because of the mutation. So it can be carried on from two generations. Uh, just to see, uh, show you all that each and every organ of the chronic poisoning of pesticides uh, may be the eyes, ears, nose, respiratory system, gastrointestinal, urinary, liver, muscular, any, any system, this is being damaged by the pesticides. According to a report, now we are talking about the well-being. The health and the well-being, the SDG says this. So according to report, there are approximately 7,40,000 annual cases of unintentional accidental pesticide poisoning, of which 7,426 are fatal deaths. This is according to a report and research. 
44% of the 860 million farmers globally are poisoned by pesticides every year. Further, according to available reports, highest number of this is another thing of this unintentional accidental poisoning is maximum in Southeast Asia, especially in India. This is the scenario in our country. Then, the next one, that is the third SDG, as per the five SDGs I am going to talk about, responsible consumption and production reserves, pesticides. See, India is the fourth largest pesticide producer of the world after US, Japan, China. So, here we stand in the pesticide production. We are talking about that we need not use them, but see where, are, where we stand in the production. The Indian pesticide industry is the biggest in Asia and 12th in the world. The Indian pesticide market size reached either of 229.4 billion in 2022. Imagine the cost of money we are spending on this. The global pesticide and other agricultural chemicals market grew from 90.5 billion dollars in 2022 to 98.42 billion in 2023 and a compound annual growth rate of 8.8%. This is what the increased rate is. Global pesticide consumption is expected to reach 4.4 billion metric tons by 2026, up from 4.2 uh, uh, billion in 2021. This is an increase of 0.5 each year since 1995. So you see the increase of the pesticide consumption. Now, China, talking about the consumption, China is the largest consumer of pesticides with 1.8 million metric tons in 2021. I wanted to bring into the about this uh, data because it's very important. We are talking about the SDGs at the global level. So it's not only India that is using, all the countries in the world are using the pesticides. The United States, Brazil, Argentina follow in second world and fourth place, while India ranks ninth. Global pesticide imports are forecast to reach 2.8 million metric tons by 2026 compared to 2.5 million in 2021. India is the leading importer of pesticides with this metric tons in 2021. It's the leading importer. Thailand, Germany, because how much is being used, not only exported but it also imports. There are certain pesticides which are also exported by the country. Thailand, Germany, and Taiwan form in second, third, and fourth place. Global insecticide export is set to reach at 1029.8 million kilograms by 2026 from 969. So imagine this million kilograms with the increase of 3.1 percent per year. So this is the rate of production and consumption being where this is what the situation is going to be. Just to show you all, this is the global level of agrochemical consumption and use. You can see the herbicides, the pesticides, and the insecticides at the maximum of 65 percent. This is the volume of pesticides produced across India from financial year 2015 to 2021. Although it shows a drop, but overall it is, it is not so. Overall it is not so. In the year, of course, it reduces. This is the consumption pattern of pesticides in India. 60 percent. This is the state-wide pesticide consumption in India. Uh, Jammu and Kashmir and Haryana being the highest consumers of pesticides uh, followed by other states. This is the consumption of chemical pesticides in India. You see the graph. It was a bit quite high in 91, 92 and 94, 95 but it reduced to a certain extent but again increased. So, so uh, there is not much variation in the use since 19, 2016, 17. Uh, I could find only this data. In 2022, the major markets in the pesticide industry were India at the top. So, what is happening? The estimated pollination losses of food production for pesticides, effects on honeybees and wild bees is of 200 million dollars per year. If you are using pesticides, but how much are we using in the form of insects and relation with its uh, economy? This one million annually we are using. Destruction by pesticides on the natural enemies of pests can cost an estimated $520 million per year in the US itself. A conservative estimate of fish killed, that is, it ranges from 6 to 14 million per year by pesticide ranges from 24 to 56 million dollars. And the total number of wild birds killed by pesticides is estimated at 67 million. And the value of these bird loss of pesticides is 2.1 billion 
dollars annually. So not only that, look, we are using pesticides, we are spending on pesticides, but in nature, the loss, if we estimate it in terms of money value, these are the losses to only a few animals, that is only to birds and fishes and from the boat. Uh, I've been a student of zoology, uh, more concerned with animals there, but of course, rest are also affected. Life in the water, this is the fourth SDG that I will be discussing. Pesticide residue in water can cause serious pollution of groundwater as well as surface water and may result in the death of water organisms, change in the properties of water, negative effect on the process of oxygen formation by phytoplankton and the vital activities of the inhabitants of the water ecosystems, impacts are transmitted along the food chains, accumulation in the food chain, indirectly by doing or affecting all these uh, parameters of water and disturbing the aquatic ecology and adverse effects on wetlands, aquatic flora, so on and so forth. So pesticide residues in water are a major concern as they pose a serious threat to biological communities. Now these two are the just the studies to show you all how it can affect. A study found that even low concentration the study is pesticide melatonin cause direct and indirect effects on aquatic communities leading to decrease in zooplankton diversity, a decrease in periphytum and also decrease in growth of frog tadpoles. Similarly, a EP assessment, uh, this is a report of 2021, three types of neonicotinoids, uh, these are again the pesticides which are harming the bees around the globe, which are being used to uh, actually manage the bees, uh, found that they are likely to harm 38 amphibian species and about three quarters of all species minus three quarters of all species protected under the Endangered Species Act. So three fourth of all, if suppose it's, the number is 100, 75 species are being uh, done harm uh, by these use of pesticides. They can have directly lead to causing fish mortality worldwide. So pesticide pentachloroethanol is reported to cause large numbers of fish mortality in the rice fields of Surinam. This is a report. Of course, it's a very early, uh, earlier report of 1970, but definitely the scenario is not much different today. A survey was conducted to examine, examine the influence of pesticides on aquatic community in West Bengal, India, and many body tissues. Now, this is a case study of India. What it says, many body tissues of the fish, such as gills, elementary canal, liver, brain of the carp and catfishes, were found drastically damaged by pesticides. And it was reported that such level of pesticides in fish could harm the fish consumers as well. So in Bengal, uh, and actually I yeah, said fish is a staple food and if this is going to be the condition, uh, you can expect what is going to be the result, what is going to be the outcome. Uh, just to show you all, we see in the uh, newspapers and uh, maybe net, go through the results, fish kill. Now this fish kill is because of rotenone again and insecticide and pesticides well kills tens of thousands of fish in Virginia. Uh, various reports, you always find these uh, email, uh, photographs uh, in newspapers so often. So, life on land preserves pesticides. Finally, I've talked about the fourth and this is the fifth on land, effect of life on land, where human beings and other animals all are affected. As I've already talked about the human beings, every organ is being affected. Just uh, again, repeat in a uh, few words. Air pollution by pesticides result in the following in case of human beings. Respiratory illness, eye burning, irritation of nose, these are all the acute uh, uh, symptoms. Stuffing, headache, cause of cherry, lips, unconsciousness and death by asphyxiation. Now, pesticide may affect life on land in ways other than direct or secondary poisoning. They may impact wildlife indirectly when a part of its habitat or food supply is modified. For instance, herbicides may reduce food cover, uh, food cover and insects needed by insect, bird, mammal populations. They may diminish insect populations uh, fed by uh, fed on by birds. Insect pollinators may be reduced, thereby affecting plant pollination. Exposure to pesticides can also alter an organism's behavior. Now this behavior also is very drastic, uh, uh, affects the uh, animal drastically, uh, impacting its ability to survive. In birds, for example, exposure to certain pesticides can increase singing ability, making it difficult to attract mates and reproduce. So if there is a uh, 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 if the mating is not there, exposure would be 
produce and then definitely uh, maybe it would lead to uh, endangered species or even up, uh, it may lead to extinction. Pesticides can also affect birds ability to care for offspring causing the young to die. For these pesticides result in some little effects impacting uh, mobility, feeding behaviors and navigation. So behavior is also impacted. Now, workers have found much evidence that organic chlorine pesticides including DVD. Of course it has been bad, but you may find it in use uh, somewhere or the other. It's not only India, but even in other countries sometimes you can find them that are being used. Diabetes, annoying, hepatoclin, lizards and other reptiles. It is estimated that of roughly 672 million birds exposed annually to pesticides on US agricultural lands, 10 or that means 67 million are killed. Well documented bird kills have been caused by the organophosphates, diazinol, isophenols and chlorpyrifos with one kill involving 30 to 40,000 birds. A review of alien forestry application showed that four are important phosphates, phosphidone, phenytrion, S3 and trichloroform caused reductions in the abundance of singing males and number of birds present or the number of species present. Now this is just to show the claims in 1996 organic phosphate from a protocol apart from pesticide then we do birds killed more than 20,000 Swetzel's hawks that ingested more of more of protocols poison grasshoppers in Argentina. So in 1990, the supertoxic carbon insecticide carbon killed millions of waterfowl shorebirds raptors, including this golden eagle. In 2013 studies on neonicotinoids, the most widely used insecticides reported that these substances are lethal to birds. A single seed coated with a neonic can kill a songbird such as a field sparrow. This is a field sparrow. In 2014, toxic protifecum based pesticide was reported to be toxic to red, red tailed hawks and even other raptors. Babylonians are also vulnerable to pesticides such as carbofuron and neonicotinoids. Golden winged babbler, ruby throated hummingbird, these uh, also have been found that the pesticides affect them to a lethal extent. So, carbofuron has been estimated to kill 1 to 2 million birds annually in the US. Malathion cloud by force, at least I think to harm most of them. Now, see, 1,782 mammal birds, fish, reptiles, and plants listed under the Endangered Species Act. These many species which we are talking about are endangered, are being harmed by the use of pesticides. So this is only the list of those which are included, which include all the animal groups. Chlorpyrifos is also a severe risk to 97% of the animals, most threatened flora and fauna. Another pesticide, as you know, often used on cockroaches and ants, threatened 79% of the endangered species. Nicotinoids are already accused of contributing widespread, uh, widespread insect declines and they can also harm rabbits, birds, and deer. Yeah. Uh, these are the uh, these effects of uh, natural insect animals on parasitoids, predators, earthworms, and uh, of course the insect pollinators and the soil arthropods. Livestock we are pesticides contaminated soils, crops, and borders may accumulate considerable residues in edible tissue. So we are talking about the field, but those animals which are our livestock, in them also they can be accumulated. Among this is a very important report. Among several meat products, greatest contamination was observed in chicken muscle followed by goat and beef, as documented by workers in Lucknow, India. So all those which are consumed by the human beings in the form of food. Maybe chicken, maybe gold, maybe beef, they are have been observed to be contaminated. According to a report by the ICMR, higher levels of organic chlorine pesticide residues have been reported in meat and milk samples carried from different locations of the country. Um, a very sad status. Now, they also affect the plants. Pesticide toxicity results in reduction of chlorophyll and chlorine contents, accompanied by decreased photosynthetic uh, efficiency of plants. And pesticide, the stress also generates reactive oxygen species, which causes oxidative stress. Now, the Environmental Protection Agency has determined that the endocrine disrupting pesticides, atrazine, is likely harming 1,013 uh, protected species. According to Endangered Species Protection Program, all endangered and threatened species which need to be protected from pesticides include uh, the salt tree beetle, which means the American bunny the Chapeka Shaina, the Wuping Terrell, the Crane, the Piping Clover, the Black Footed Ferret, the Chapeka Squad Butterfly. Uh, they need to be saved from the impact of pesticides. 
Now here I will just show you a glimpse of the few American species which have been employed by pesticides. Uh, these include the California red leg frog, Indiana bat, green market vultures, uh, mussel, it's a bulbous, sand jacket pig fox, the chicken salmon, the crowfish, crocus, bumblebee, the monarch butterfly, the northern spotted owl, the stream corn lark, the salino salamander, the Heinz emerald giant fly. So, both the fast and no better pesticides have impacted directly uh, the all the organisms, all the animal life people on earth. But certain other issues have also come up, which include the issue of pesticide resistance. Uh, this is how the pesticide resistance develops. And there is also a feature of biomagnification, where actually the lower level goes on increasing in the higher topic, uh, the topmost uh, food chain in the food chain. You see the BDD water was how much? Quite zero, 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 three million. But it goes to 10 million times an increase when it was found in the uh, fish eating works. So this is how the biomagnification takes place. Do you want to see these reports? Yes. And for instance, state for pesticide poisoning, which are report pesticide increase and pillars of soil state, in the box state, big water infestation increases, and certain deaths due to accidental leakage of pesticides, so on and so forth. These are the new paper cuttings. Uh, very significant report, this is the latest report of this year, 2023, 30 January, where a study in Lacknow Speed Bay Hospital was claimed that pesticides have been found in the milk of pregnant women, which were responsible for the death of nearly 111 newborn in the past 10 months in my uh, history. So, figure uh, consequences, what needs to be done, some alternative strategy is definitely required, reduce pesticide use if we can, more research into sustainable methods, robust sustainable monitoring design for the pesticides. We need to know how much exactly what amount should be used if at all we are using. Actually we use them, the farmers are because they are illiterate, they use them as much as they want. They just go and sprinkle them. This is also a minimum quantity which has been defined, which has been tested and uh, set and prescribed that this much amount has to be used, only that has to be used in a very particular and delicious manner. And of course, we are talking about advice and educate the farmers, which is the most important thing. Uh, talking about that, uh, this is a little bit of our research, plants for the secondary metabolites and uh, the botanicals are important, they can be considered as safe, by biodegradable, cost effective, cheap and handy and easily available. So we tested certain plants for their insecticide efficacy. We use this insect calcifocus channel, so this is the way and free way. These are the healthy rates of Luna radiata. These are the infective rates where you can see the eggs laid by the pest. This is how the damage is caused, you can see the whole things. And uh, we use different plants and different uh, formulations. Uh, we study many substances, but uh, just for uh, uh, everyone's knowledge, and then mortality was the study. Uh, some plants were found to be superior over others. And it can be concluded that because of the biological activity, the plants could uh, act as a substitute, especially against the chemical insecticides. And the green insecticides are earlier. All the botanicals can be considered as a hopeful tool in insect waste management with the aim of it, uh, maintaining the long term productivity of crops and contributing towards safe and sustainable agricultural development, which is actually our aim, while at the same time reducing environmental degradation, which we have been talking about since last two days, being eco friendly and also safer to animal and human health and good health. Why we have to discuss some sustainable development goals to a certain extent? Because I am talking about only the five, but others are indirectly related. So this is uh, was my lab where we conducted the study. Uh, and all the students, I am thankful to uh, these PhD students. Thank you.
आपने अपनी बात को बहुत ही अच्छे में रखा कि जो फार्मर एग्रीकल डोमेन कंट्री है जहाँ इसकी साज का इतना प्रोवर के हम हर चीज डिग्रेडेड होती जा रही है ग्रास रूट लेवल के ऊपर मैं अलवर की बात करता हूँ अलवर के अंदर चार सेंटर है एग्रीकल डेवलपमेंट में दो है कृषि विज्ञान केंद्र है एक पंजाब नेशनल बैंक का ट्रेनिंग सेंटर है और आगमा सेंटर है लेकिन दूसरी तरफ जब हम एग्रीकल डेवलपमेंट की बात करते हैं एग्रीकल प्रैक्टिस की बात करते हैं उसकी जो अडेप्टेशन है वो परकुलेट नहीं हो पा रही उसमें गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया ने प्रोग्राम ही चलाया हुआ गैप गुड एग्रीकल्चर प्रैक्टिस गैट फॉर द सस्टेनेबल एग्रीकल्चर डेवलपमेंट लेकिन वो परकुलेट नहीं हो पा रही दूसरा भी गवर्नमेंट ऑफ इंडिया नेशनल हाईवे बोर्ड का फाइव करोड़ का प्रोजेक्ट रखा है कि वो हनी भी के थ्रू उसको प्रमोट किया जाए क्योंकि हनी भी जब बेस्ट पोलूटर फॉर द क्रॉप प्रोडक्शन एक्टिविटीज टू मेटिगेट द क्लाइमेट चेंज एंड एग्रीकल्चर डॉमेंट पॉइंट इज दैट स्कीम इज देयर एवरीथिंग इज देयर दिस इज नॉट एन एडेप्टिव एंड इनफॉर्मेट कल वन ऑफ द प्रेजेंटेशन गिवन बाय द इंस्पिरेशन इंफॉर्मेशन एंड इंप्लीमेंटेशन देयर इज ए नीड ऑफ अ ग्रेटर इंप्लीमेंटेशन ऑफ द बेस्ट प्रैक्टिसेस बेस्ट सिस्टम हनी इज द बेस्ट सॉल्यूशन कनाडा के प्रेजेंट में मैं कनाडा के रिप्रेजेंट को बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद दूंगा कनाडा इज ए ओनली कंट्री विद द हाईएस्ट मैक्सिमम यूटिलाइजेशन हनी बी इन फूड स्टॉक्स क्योंकि हैज ए कैलोरी इज वेरी हाई इन हनी बी बहुत बहुत धन्यवाद आप क्योंकि ये प्रैक्टिस की बात है कि हम अपने एग्रीकल डोमेन को कैसे बढ़ाया जाए और उसको प्रैक्टिस में लिया जाए मेरा क्वेश्चन क्वेश्चन नहीं है इज माई अडेप्टेशन
uh, use in India because we are the highest population. So the need of peoples we have to grow more from. What are the alternatives? Some alternate I will tell you when I, my, my presentation will come. But the few thing is that we can shift it to the from this to the organic production. One another thing is that rather than we can use a synthetic pesticide, we can move over the natural pesticide. Another thing is that it, because everything is polluted, not with the pesticide, with a lot of antibiotics. In the vegetables, antibiotic is also very common. In the non-waste meat, chicken, everywhere is antibiotic just to increase the self life of that product. But generally we are focused on the antibiotic, uh, or generally pesticides. Whenever you are buying anything, you can keep your fruits or vegetables for half an hour in a clean water. If it is possible, you can put some ozone uh, uh, tablets or whatever is there to remove that from the surface. Another thing is always be vigilant, whatever is going on there. And there is a no control of selling of these pesticides, we cannot control it also. Another thing is, for controlling the pesticide, we have control the population also. Thank you. Thank you, sir, and thank you the organizers, especially Dr. Mamda Sharma for giving me this opportunity. Thank you all so much. Hello, Hajj. Ma'am, please stay back. Uh, when I was uh, seeing uh, Dr. Meera Ma'am and Dr. Ajay talking each other, so the thing was coming to my mind and I was telling my principal that this is how we do toxicologists talk. So, it was such a wonderful presentation, Meera Ma'am, and I always get more attached to you because we both work on pesticides and Dr. Bhattnagar is here and I think he is the one who has worked maximum on pesticides only. So that is amazing and this is something you cannot deny, the use of pesticides. Uh, Dr. Acha has joined up just yesterday evening, so I would request um, a patron and principal to welcome him. I would request Dr. Meera Shivastu to join the presentation ceremony. Principal sir and Mamata ma'am and the 
the Raj Vishri management who have given opportunity to me to speak a um, little bit about the sustainable uh, development and its goals and the related uh, how I am little bit very maybe a drop and maybe contributing that how I am contributing. I am no way connected to basically no way connected to either environmental uh, subject or sustainability subject or any of this subject but as a farmer um, I may be contributing a little bit. I want to share that with you. Okay. I think uh, Mamata uh, Srivastava uh, Srivastava already spoken about the topic and uh, how we are facing problems with the pesticides, fertilizers, etc. But I may be trying to give you a solution for this and we have started practicing in that direction. I think uh, this is the topic I tried uh, my level class to prepare and to align with the sustainable development goals also. Uh, overview on sustainable uh, integrated multi-layer agriculture which we are uh, trying to practice already started in that line and this one we call Argo Forestry and uh, very near similar to that only Argo Forestry through green infrastructure. So we are going to understand what is sustainable integrated multi-layer agriculture. Uh, not multi-level, multi-level is the vertical farming so that huge infrastructure is required which we are not suggesting or not recommending it is multi-layer and uh, the, if you see the and a special focus to livestock growth design by using uh, a science of design of experiments so with this let me start my presentation so this is the uh, I think this I may not be interested to explain you all are experts in this area what is agriculture, what is sustainable agriculture, what is green infrastructure but even then some of the people like me may be attending who are uh, very minimal knowledge in this area that's why just I can read it the agriculture uh, refers to the practice of the cultivation crops rising livestock normally agriculture means people will feel only cultivating various crops, fruits, vegetables etc not only that it is over and above this the livestock also. If you are in, if you have a goat farm, uh, uh, other poultry, etc. That also includes agriculture and producing fruits, fibers, and other material used to sustain human life. Uh, it encompasses a wide range of activities involved in the production of the food, goods, including farming, animal husbandry, forestry, aquaculture and related practices. So that means earlier I think golden days, my golden days, my childhood, we have done it. In a, in a family, as a farmer family, we used to have not only agriculture land, cultivating various crops, over and above we have animals like uh, birds, chick, chick, uh, what you can call uh, uh, birds means not but they are flying birds. Uh, walking uh, birds, you can call chicken, and normally it will be used for meat. Then goats, we have um, buffaloes, cows, and oxes, bullock, bullock pot, especially bullocks, which we will use for even cultivation 30 35 years back. Now that generation has gone because the doctors have come and other harvesting missions have come, that is the reason we may not be using. But my childhood, I, I think I, we have integrated farming by considering the crops plus livestock. Then what is the sustainable agriculture? This is sustainable agriculture refers to the farming and food production system that aims to meet present needs for food and fiber while, oh sorry, uh, while also ensuring the long term visibility, uh, viability of the natural resources and the environment. It is holistic approach that takes into account economic, social and environmental factors. So all these, these three things we should consider whenever we call sustainable and seeking a balance between them, all these things. We, that is most important. That balance is not occurring because of we have uh, we are using pesticides, fertilizers and so on. I already did say what the clearly explained the losses because of fertilizer and pesticides. So to avoid that, no, no need government has sir told there are n number of schemes from government that may not be coming to the farmer level. But as a farmer, we also can take decision. As an employee, you also can buy a small land and do the very interestingly huge profitable thing. 
things you can do uh, and long run basis. Short term may may not be, but long run definitely it is profitable what I am going to tell you if you adopt. And uh, what is the green method? The sustainable uh, cultivation or sustainable agriculture through green infrastructure. What is green infrastructure? If you see with respect to agriculture, green infrastructure with respect to several things, several way people may define, but with respect to agriculture, if you see, you can, these are the things with respect to sustainable uh, integrated multi-layer agriculture, that is agroforestry, includes organic uh, products, seeds, baby plants, etc. for plantation, food to uh, food to livestock. The livestock means the food feed which we are giving to the our animals that also include solar pumps for irrigation, solar fences and for protecting crops, various infrastructure for rainwater harvesting, infrastructure for water management, rivers, canals, lakes, ponds, etc. Infrastructure for uh, compost fertilizer, compost pesticides, infrastructure for biodiversity. These all the infrastructure, I think very limited I kept it. The infrastructure pertaining to this we will call uh, green infrastructure. Green, green infrastructure. So you have completely provided if you the green infrastructure if you use, you can 100% avoid the pesticides and fertilizer. And not only that, people may have some misconception. If I won't use pesticides and fertilizer, crop may not come, an expected crop may not come, it may go down. No. There we have experimentations, we have several people have done it. And 200 percent, I think Mamata uh, Srivastava told, in for future generation will keep in mind at least 75 to 70 percent more uh, food is required, but not 70 percent, even 200, 300 percent more you can produce if you adopt the multi-layer uh, concept. Multi-layer, what is multi-layer? You try to, be, I may discuss a little bit. And if you want to study more, you can uh, read the several articles are there on multi layers. That means one acre feed equal to five acre cultivation you can do because of multi layer. Very interesting, just you can try to understand what it is and how it can be uh, done. Then uh, let me read the green infrastructure with respect to sustainable integrated multi layer agriculture that only we call agroforestry includes organic product. Uh, already have done. Then, Few benefits of green infrastructure can include improved water quality and quantity, reduced uh, fruiting and erosion and increased biodiversity, improved air quality, then uh, the quality agriculture products, enhanced uh, recreation and tourism opportunities and increased economic opportunities. These are the etc. There are several benefits. We can't list down all the things. I think this, I think in my first slide if you see, there are seven uh, sorry, out of 70, 11 sustainable development. Yeah, uh, intentional like uh, come here, sir. Yeah. yeah. Out of here, you can see this slide top. It supports. Suppose if you properly understand the concept and apply and produce and supply the, uh, the food the product to the people. I think 11, 17 sustainable. Development goals are there. Out, out of 17 sustainable development goals, at least 11 goals you are you are little bit you are supporting. 11 goals to meet 11 goals you are going to support. What are those 11 also? I am showing to you. It supports to achieve at least 11 of. I think ma'am is mentioned five more than five. But I am 11. I am going to show 11 of the 17 sustainable development goals. You can contribute little bit from your side, provided if you practice it. So these are the green infrastructure can be used to support sustainable agriculture in the number of ways. For example, these are the ways. I don't want, I think you know very well. These all, uh, everybody knows protecting water resources, provide habitat uh, pollinators, uh, then uh, store carbon in the soil and vegetation, provide shades and uh, uh, wind breaks and create corridors and uh, wildlife movements and so on. There are several benefits are there. Some of the benefits we kept it here. So now we try to understand this multi, what is multi-layer forming. If you properly understand multi-layer forming and there is nothing more than this. In one acre land, normally you may, you may be as on today, you may be taking one um, X rupee revenue, but five X rupee also you can go properly understand and cultivate and with zero cost. 
what you it may be a, what you can call may not be digestible to listen with the, with the zero cost getting 5x revenue from one acre land it may not be digestible to any one of you but it is fact it is happening if I, I can show to you some of the examples try to understand what is multi-layer farming the multi-layer farming is the process of growing multiple crops in a single field single field this is done by planting a crop on top of the already existing crop the first crop is then harvested and the land is used to plant another crop then I, I will explain you with the examples how it can be done the purpose of this is to save space on land and improve the efficiency it is an ancient method of farming that is used to increase crop yield and avoid uh, competition between plants avoid competition between plants you have to select the crops in such a way I can give one or two examples. Then multi-layer farming is a type of the polyculture that involves growing multiple crops in a single area. It generally involves growing plants at different heights so that one crop grow on the ground and another grow above it. Then it is a kind of agriculture method that is used to optimize the use of land and improve the quality of the soil. The main idea of the kind of farming is to plant different types of crops in one field and then use the uh, remain from each crop as you see last statement if you see very interesting and then use the remains from each crop as a fertilizer to another crop one crop becomes fertilizer to another crop that means one crop waste will become fertilizer same time to another crop for example even if you see from these windows you can see multi cropping it is there here uh, without your knowledge here multi cropping is suppose I may do mango plantation. Mango plantation, if I have, people may think that uh, that is what you can call assumption, wrong assumption. See, mango plantation is there, I should not put any other crops. If I buy, put other crops, mango may not come, which is totally wrong. You have a mango cultivation. Mango, in the science, what I am telling is science, not I am just like uh, generally I am telling. Mango trees, when they become adult trees, its roots will go three. Uh, maybe some fruits, two feeds or three feeds it will go. It consumes mango tree or any uh, uh, tamarind, uh, tamarind tree, the sir tree. These trees uh, will, its roots, big trees roots will go three, two to three feet below the earth and it consumes minerals and water having the uh, after, after two to three feet only, not a first layer. Suppose under mango tree, if I keep a small plant, maybe papaya plant, papaya plant require water and minerals, but it is not competitor to the uh, mango tree, because mango tree roots are going 3, 3 feet, below 3 feet only it will take, but above 3 feet it won't take, the papaya tree may go 1, 1 and a half feet, and 1, 1 and a half feet, whatever minerals are there, water is there, that it consumes and it will give fruit. And whatever this, uh, uh, what you can call mango tree leaves, whenever it will fall, it will become fertilizer to the papaya. Papaya tree leaves will become fertilizer to the both of the trees. So this is the way they complement each other. The another interesting, this is two layer we can call. Because mango and papaya two layer. Suppose three layer if I want to make in the same land, I can put another small plants, so what, what you can call green, green uh, uh, what is that? Uh, leafy vegetables, you may be seen. The exercise is only outfit, the height is only outfit. And its root, if you see, leafy vegetable root, if you see, it may not be more than 2 inch, 3 inch. 2 inch, 3 inch means top layer of the earth. Whatever minerals and water is there, it will consume. So, the uh, uh, what you can call leafy vegetables, it, it is not consuming the, the minerals and water which is uh, meant for. Um, either mango tree or meant for papaya tree. Are you getting? Are you getting? If you are not understanding, let me uh, uh, ask me, I can tell you. That means the leafy vegetable that is first layer, it is consuming minerals and water from the earth only 2 inches, 3 inches. Because its roots, if you want, you want to fit the uh, leafy vegetable. Root length, if you see, it may not be not more than 2 inches or 3 inches. It won't go more than that. That means the earth layer. Within 2 inches or 3 inches, whatever water is there, whatever mineral is there, that is the consumed by the leafy vegetable. More than that, it won't go. But papaya, it won't consume that first layer, that 2 inch, 3 inch, 4 inch, not sufficient. More than half feet only it will go. Below half feet, up to 1 feet, uh, that 
whatever uh, minerals and uh, water is there that will be consumed by papaya. And the mango tree and big trees, it won't consume even one feet a layer, top one feet, one and a half feet. It will go two or three feet lower and water and uh, minerals will be consumed for, from there. You can't believe, you can go and see some of the trees and around the tree they might have constructed the, uh, what you can call, uh, uh, bed, bed and for sitting the people. Tree may be there and surrounding the people, people will sit. That means we are not putting fertilizer, we are not putting pesticides there, but still that tree is green. Because of that tree, that tree is not consuming any water nearby. It is, it is, it roots might have gone maybe several feet away from this, uh, after three, three and a half feet below, several meters might have gone around that, from there it is consuming its water and food, not at the top layer. That is the reason it is, these are surviving, top trees, large trees are surviving. I might have explained, I might have tried to convince you, that means three layers, three crops you can take from, not only three, if you properly plan, if you understand the science, how this is consuming minerals and water from ground, you can go four, five crops people are taking. That means simultaneously, one acre land, you can four, five crops easily, you can cultivate and get the crops. And without putting fertilizer and pesticides are coming away. And that uh, we, we, we may make composite, uh, uh, compost of fertilizer, pesticides, and the water, and uh, naturally the leaves only will fall, that only will become fertilizer over a period of time. Beginning time, while planning, uh, you may have to spend money and time and after after some time if uh, just like the nature like the forest nature if you develop automatically you see I, I think have you observed any forest you can go in India I think nobody is cultivating that no labor is work is no labor is consumed no pesticides is given no fertilizer is given still that forest is so greenery greenery some forest may be very dense forest lot of uh, trees you might have seen some may be very may not be dense. Just to depend upon soil nature, we have to uh, understand that soil nature and cultivate accordingly what are the crops best for this soil, best for this climate. That four or five layers if you identify, four or five or six layers cultivation you can do simultaneously same time. And it, your productivity from the soil, same soil will go to 200, 300, 400, depend upon your capability, how you are planning and cultivating. That is the uh, message from this multi-layer farming. It is practical and people are practicing. If you want, you can come to me. I can show. Here also morning I have seen from window, there is a tree. I think not in this building or last one tree is there. That tree, below that tree there are plants are there. Lot of plants are there. People who are another assumption, if when tree is there, tree, tree shadow will be there. The sunlight will not be there. Without sunlight, tree, the plants may not uh, live. No, that is the wrong assumption. Sunlight anyway it will come. Suppose if you are around the tree, Shadow always will not be there same place. Morning time shadow may be at west side. Evening time the shadow will be east side. So the west side uh, plants evening the, in the sunlight it will get and uh, east side morning itself it will get sunlight. So sunlight automatically it will get even baby plant also. Uh, uh, shadow may not affect. Shadow may not be there all the time on these uh, baby plants which are exactly under big tree. If you want you can go observe it is there, here only it is there, it's through window you can see top tree and there are around the tree there are small small baby plants are, small plants are there. So that's why please try to propagate this multi-layer forming, understand this multi-layer forming, lot of literature is there and to try to practice in your area also, wherever you be. And this is the, these are the just few examples of how green uh, infrastructure can be used in a sustainable, integrated, multi-layer agriculture. As the world population continues uh, to grow, the need for sustainable, integrated, multi-layer multi agricultural practices will become increasingly important. The green infrastructure can play a vital role in helping to meet this need by providing farmers with the tools and the resources they need to produce food in the way that is both the productive and environmental friendly. Productive and environment. productive means productivity will go at least two, three hundred percent provided if you apply multi-layer. Now this is agroforestry. Agroforestry and sustainable integrated multi-layer almost are one and same. And uh, if you see it's uh, what are the benefits if you see it is increased crop yield, 
improved soil and reduced erosion and increased biodiversity and improved water quality, reduced pest uh, pest and disease pre uh, pressure, increased economic opportunities, etc. You will get from this agroforestry. Why agroforestry uh, is uh, no cost? Beginning time one or two years, you may have to put your plant proper for this given land. What are the best layers of the multi-layer crops? And uh, in initially you may have to invest and plant. Once if you plant, it is uh, after some time you can leave it as a forest only. No need to cultivation, no need to labor, no need anything. Only you may have to spend a little money harvesting time. You have to pick the fruits from the tree. For that you may have to spend otherwise. For cultivation per se, there is no cost is involved over a period of time. Uh, that means we are replicating forest only, similar to forest, but this is fruit, fruit forest, fruit and vegetable forest, food grain forest, forest. there is no, uh, what you can call, uh, plants without giving fruits, vegetable and uh, 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 grains, food grains, etc. Until unless you plant the plants which are timber purpose, like cake, etc. Then I think this Kerala, some of the example already is there, multi-layer farming in Kerala and the job card you can see, naturally it is there. In Kerala you might have seen under uh, job fruit, there might be uh, uh, other uh, small, small plants with there, even climbers with there and the climbers. I think interesting thing is, in the mango tree, you can uh, plant climbers or the vegetables, maybe bitter gourd. Bitter gourd, if you plant, it will come within three months the crop. But you have to time, you have to see in such a way that the mango tree, mango flowering and fruit will come only in the month of uh, maybe December to uh, June, July. And uh, June, July, you, there will not be any mango after July. So July, if you start uh, the climbers, like uh, bitter gourd, etc., vegetables, and it will climb the tree only and give fruits uh, are not fruits visible uh, from the same tree. If you see in the instead of mango, you can see the bitter gods or some other visible. So then it will be over the crop, harvesting will be over by uh, July, through, by December, before December it will be over. It is three months, three months crop. So that means without using additional land, same land, you can take second crop as a visible bitter god or any climbers, you can use it. So these are the example practically we have seen that I am explaining to you. Then these are the sustainable development uh, uh, goals. There are 17 goals I have given. These 17 goals, if you 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 can very well achieve, provided if you practice the multi-layer uh, farming. In multi-layer farming, no poverty. Poverty can be 100% uh, avoided because 